Good morning. It is nine o'clock on Friday, November 19th, and I am here at Killarney Provincial Park once again. Um, I'm at George Lake today. I've never been on George Lake. I've never camped on George Lake. So um, I have the canoe here and the hot tent, and I'm gonna do a hot tent canoe trip. All right, I am here at the access to beautiful George Lake. Um, I came to the beach access because uh, I heard this was a little bit easier to get in than the canoe access. Uh, I'm gonna get the canoe off the car here and get it loaded up with the hot tan and the stove and all my goodies. Uh, it should be quite full, but um, I know that everything fits because I've tested it out before and I've done uh, two canoe hot tent trips last year. So um, I'm super excited. I can't wait to get out there and uh, check out George Lake. I hear it's beautiful. It is uh, almost 9.30. Um, got the canoe all loaded up. Uh, took me a while to put my little space suit on. I actually left my car keys and my fleecy that I was wearing underneath this, so I had to open it back up and get those out to move the car to park it. Um, but I'm all good now. I'm about to get on the water, and uh, I'm excited to go check out George Lake. All right, I am off. Sun is shining. It's supposed to be really sunny today. Um, it's supposed to be around two degrees today. Feels like minus two. And then going down to feels like minus seven overnight. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit of rain early in the morning. And then uh, it's supposed to rain all afternoon after that tomorrow. So um, I'm going to spend the day here. Hopefully be able to do some exploring. Uh, just make sure the solo hot tent is all good to go for the season. Uh, the stove, everything. Make sure everything is uh, working great. Kind of like a test run, and uh, that's about it. So, see how it goes. Beautiful La Cloche mountain range over to my right here in the distance, and uh, hoping to get a view of that if I can get to campsite number six. We'll see how it goes. Beautiful sunny day, and just paddling along through George. Uh, it's a little bit of snowfall yesterday. It was supposed to be a, there was a warning. It said up to 20 centimeters, but when you took the hourly, there was only like uh, one centimeter per hour for like two hours and that was it. So um, I knew it wasn't going to be too bad this morning. Uh, so far the wind's okay. There's a couple of little gusts, but I'm still in the little bay. Um, I have to kind of go through uh, like a little corridor or channel. Um, and that's when I get into the uh, open part of the lake. So um, when I get to there, I'll see how it is. And then I'll make the decision whether to uh, paddle to six or go to two. Um, I'm pretty sure I can do six, uh, but we'll see what the conditions are like uh, before I make the absolute definite decision. It should be interesting to see the different kinds of rocks. I love rocks, so um, it's something that I'm really interested in seeing while I'm out here. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. On George Lake, you can not only view white quartzite rock, but also pink granite. channel. Um, if you see right where my uh, bow is pointing there, um, that is the point um, where I go around to get into the main part of the lake. Um, and just over to my left here, I guess I could just turn the camera, it'd be easier, um, where these pink rocks are, right here, there's a point. And if you go around that point, that is where campsite number two is. So super, super close. Um, if you're just looking to go in somewhere easy. Um, and again, I don't think it's more than two and a half kilometers to get to the other end of the lake to where site number six is. So got a little bit of wind uh, gusting here in the channel. Um, I always find that channels are worse. They kind of become like little wind tunnels um, and then once you get out into the open water it's better most times but not always. Alright, I'm just 
about to go around this point here. I can hear the winds and the trees, but not feeling too many effects yet. I figured if I get blasted, I figure you can get blasted with me, so let's see what it's like. Oh my gosh, these rocks are so pretty. Gorgeous. Bit of snow here today on some of the rocks. Um, not much, but uh, we were supposed to get 20 centimeters yesterday uh, where I live. Uh, nothing was forecast here, but um, didn't get too much at all. I've got this huge, huge rock cliff beside me. Um, I think that this lake is fairly sheltered from the wind. I mean, I'm sure it gets wind. Uh, like my friend Paula said, depends on which way it's coming from. Um, but ever since I turned the corner and got out of that little channel, it's been perfectly great. Well, as soon as I saw that um, opening there, right in front of the boat, right at the right at the in front of the bow there, um, I thought, oh, that's the campsite because it looks like a campsite. But then when I looked on the map, I was like, I think that's too close. That can't quite be it. It's just a little too close. Um, there's a big point that comes out. And then behind that is another point that comes out where the campsite is. And uh, I think that that is where it is in behind this one. So um, not a big deal. Paddling along nicely. I even have a little bit of a tailwind here and there. Water's still fairly calm, um, and it's all good. So I'm hoping I can still see uh, these mountains here on my left uh, from the other part of the lake where the campsite is. But I was told that it has a beautiful view from my friends Jack and Paula. So uh, I'm going to trust them because they know this lake very, very, very well. That is a pretty nice view. Well, it looks like the uh, campsite is right in front of me. And um, I'm super excited to check it out and uh, get the hot tent set up and check out my surroundings, do some exploring. I just got here and like the wind, this, the wind picked up, but you can hear it. Like I said, you can hear it in the trees. It's really loud but it's not really affecting the water too much. So hopefully I'll be good. Um, I did bring a lot of extra food, so if I have to uh, call the office and book an extra night, uh, if it's too bad to leave tomorrow, I can also do that. I do have a signal here, so let's see how it goes. All right, now I'm gonna go uh, check out the campsite and uh, see where I'm gonna put my tent and do some investigating. There's a gorgeous, gorgeous landing here at the campsite. Um, and it looks like this would be a great place to swim in the summer. Um, the sun right now is not quite on the campsite, but there's a bunch of spots it could be on. <laughs> um, it's on a point, so if I wanted to have more sun, I could probably sit over on this side uh, right now. But the sun is gonna be coming around here and uh, I'm assuming it's going to set somewhere in this area, uh, which is part of why I wanted this campsite. Um, it looks like it's one of the only ones uh, that will get uh, the view of the sunset. Um, also, I wanted this gorgeous view of the mountains uh, going down the lake. And there's another gorgeous view. <laughs> here 
on this side. Look at this fire pit. What a monster. And again, more sunshine here. And more of the uh, La Cloche Mountains on this side. Look at these rocks. They're just beautiful. Look at, see the snow? <laughs> hailed yesterday. See it? It looks fake. Looks like little styrofoam balls. <laughs> oh, look at this. Beautiful. All right. Let's see if I'm probably going to put the tent right here. Looks like a good spot for it. I'm just going to take a peek at the rest of the site. Oh, look at this. Over on this side, there is another fire pit. <laughs> and sunshine coming in nice and strong. And there's also a spot for a tent here. So have to oh man it's nice and warm here <laughs> it's really nice here I might set up here I'm gonna, I'm gonna think on this one <laughs> well just a little ways over from that uh, second fire pit area uh, and sheltered spot uh, is the privy the privy with a view <laughs> Well, it's 11 o'clock. Um, I'm still exactly as uh, you saw me on the last video clip. I have been walking back and forth all around the site, trying to figure out where to put the tent and where to set up. I can't decide. It's just such a difficult decision for me. Um, there's three good spots to put the tent and two that I'm considering. Uh, the one is here in this beautiful, sunny, nice, calm, not as windy area on the one side of the campsite. There's a bay over here. It doesn't have the greatest view or anything. Um, you know, you can't see the White Mountains, but uh, it's in like a bit of a valley on this side of the campsite, and there's barely any wind here, so it's really nice. Um, I'll go to the other spot and I'll show you the other spot as well. At the very front of the campsite where I actually uh, docked the boat and that little beach is there, there is this beautiful flat grassy area right here um, that looks like it would be a spectacular spot to put my tent. This is the view that I would have, which is quite lovely, um, of the La Cloche Mountains. You can see them all around, um, and the water is right there. Yes, you can see how much thought I put into this kind of stuff. It's been uh, a half an hour <laughs> since I got here, and I haven't taken one thing out of the boat yet. <laughs> so um, it's pretty bad. Um, this is the other spot which is a really nice spot for a tent, but it's not very sheltered. There's no trees above it or anything, and it's supposed to rain uh, in the morning. And there's really not much of a view. I mean, you got that right there, but all you're looking at is trees, which is fine, but I like to have a bit of a view of something, you know, when I'm taking pictures of the tent. This is basically what you'll see, the tent and the trees behind it. Although this would be a nice, nice shot here, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so many decisions. All right. Well, I have the solo hot tent set up here uh, on this lovely campsite on George Lake in Killarney. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, I do camp year round. Uh, I love to go backcountry camping, but I also car camp in the winter. And um, I built this hot tent from scratch out of painter's drop cloth. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how I made it, I have a full three-part video series on it. And uh, I also have two other hot tents that I made. Uh, there's a bigger one as well that I have a three-part series on how I made it on my YouTube channel. Um, I'll put the link below in the description in case you're interested. 
Um, so generally I obviously camp in the snow in the winter in this, but uh, I like to do a couple of trial runs and it's always nice in November or December if I can get out in the canoe and uh, bring the hot tent out and uh, enjoy the luxury and the warmth um, while still camping uh, late in the season uh, and being able to do a paddling trip. So um, I'll take you inside and show you a little tour if you haven't seen it before and uh, show you how I have it all set up for today. And um, usually I have snow obviously around the bottom edges here uh, to kind of seal it to keep the draft out but um, I've just got the pole down a little bit lower. I actually dug a little bit into the ground um, so that the pole could go down a little bit more and that would keep the uh, edges um, a little bit uh, closer to the ground so that'll help with the draft. I set up the tent so that uh, the front door is uh, facing the middle of the campsite which might seem odd um, but I'll show you why in a second uh, if you've never seen the tent. Um, I love this tent. This is my solo tent. It's about eight and a half by eight and a half and uh, it's fairly small but it's just perfect for me to take into the backcountry by myself and uh, do trips with. So um, there's the bin that I brought the firewood in. Uh, it's just got my dry suit in it now and um, my all the bags that everything came in and stuff so I just threw it all in there and then I'm going to use it as a table. Uh, I've got my chair set up in here. There is my stove. Uh, that is the Alaskan Junior stove, uh, which I purchased from Lure of the North. Um, I've got my wood here that I brought. Um, back in here, I just have the box that the stove um, gets transported in and I just threw the uh, tent bags and stuff in there. That back corner um, is really hard to access, so I just put stuff back there that I uh, need to store and keep dry, but I don't need to access. There's my backpack where I brought all my stuff in. There's still a few things in there. And then I just have a tarp down with my Thermarest on top and my uh, minus 40 Marmot sleeping bag that I use, minus 40 Extreme. I use it year round. Um, and my Sea to Summit pillow. Uh, and I've just got a bag of clothes back there. Um, if I find that this is a little bit too drafty because it isn't quite uh, on the ground exactly everywhere, um, I have a tarp in there and I have another tarp where I can just kind of uh, like bathtub it and seal that off. But uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it. And then I got my clothesline here with my socks all ready uh, to dry once I get the stove going. And here's my beautiful window that I put in last year uh, or the year before. I think it was the year before. Um, and so I have a nice view of the Lacloche mountain range uh, through my window which is why I put the tent this way. Uh, I've got some gloves there for when I'm messing around with the fire. Uh, I do have a piece of wood that goes underneath the stove generally, um, and it is here somewhere, but um, I didn't use it because uh, it was too high um, with it. Uh, so I just kind of left it out and uh, I just cleared a bunch of the pine needles away and I do have a couple of uh, Nalgene's of water here in case there's any issues. So that is about it for now. Um, so it is set up and ready to go and um, I have some uh, cheese sausages for lunch. I'm um, just trying to figure out if I can uh, gather some wood. There doesn't seem to be too much around here. Uh, the site is pretty picked clean. Um, so I might just look around and see if I can get enough wood just to make a small fire uh, in the fire pit and cook the sausages. Um, I also have my backcountry uh, stove with me, my, my Nemo jet boil um, that I can make them on in the, like in the frying pan um, or I can cook them on the stove inside the tent. Uh, the sun is starting to come around uh, to this side of the campsite now and it is so nice and warm and the wind has died down a huge amount. Um, like look at how beautiful this spot is. This is where I was going to put the tent. Um, this was pretty much the, the main contender actually. Um, but I just thought there isn't really a ton of room here and uh, the wind is supposed to change tomorrow and come from this direction. Um, so I just thought it'd be better just to be a little bit more sheltered uh, in there um, and a little bit more protected from the wind and the rain uh, when that happens tomorrow morning. So beautiful spot there and uh, loving the sunshine. I'm going to figure out uh, what I'm going to do about lunch and get that going because I'm really hungry. And uh, then I'll probably take my chair and uh, either come sit here in the sun or um, maybe go back to that spot on the other side of the campsite if the sun's still shining there 
and uh, sit there and uh, enjoy an audiobook and my beautiful, beautiful surroundings here on George Lake in Killarney. All right, I just kind of uh, went around the campsite and got a whole bunch of uh, small sized sticks and stuff and uh, got a little fire going. Uh, I'm just going to throw the grill on quick and um, I just have two uh, cheese sausages. I think they're the Schneider's ones. They have cheese inside of them. And uh, I just brought one hamburger bun just to kind of eat with it. And uh, somewhere in the bear vault. Uh, yes, I have some uh, special fancy mustard. So uh, I'm just going to cook those up real quick. I'm just going to wait till the fire catches a little bit better. Um, and then I'll just throw the grill on. There was a grill here already. Um, so I just kind of set up the rocks before I started the fire. Um, so I can put that on top. And uh, I'm just going to cook them up. Oh, my little sausages are on. Um, got them a little burnt there to start with, but they're doing okay now. Um, I didn't have much wood, so it's just a couple of sticks that are burning, but uh, they seem to be cooking okay. And it's really all that I need just to, to cook them so I can eat them. Um, it's just a little bit after one. It's really, really nice here. Sun is shining. It is very chilly, but the sun is making it so so nice and uh it smells really good i cannot wait to eat i'm so hungry <laughs> hurry up sausages all right well it took a little bit um it's 1 30 but my sausages are done uh, i even uh, got the buns a little toasty there uh, i've got some fancy mustard on them and uh, I have brought myself down here uh, to where the canoe is in the sunshine by the water. And I'm gonna sit here and eat, enjoy my lunch and enjoy this beautiful view. Here I am. <laughs> I'm just sitting here in the sunshine. I am over on the other side of the campsite where I was thinking of putting the tent, um, the side that had the little bay on it. Um, that's all over there and that's all in the shade right now. Um, but there's this little spot here that's kind of blocked by these bushes and trees and I think the wind is getting blocked by the island out there and it's just really nice there's still a little bit of wind but it's not bad but where the canoe is over there the wind is just coming off the lake and it's not super crazy windy like it was supposed to be but it's cold right like it's i think it's about three ish degrees right now last i checked on my thermometer it's over by the tent um and it feels like minus one but in the sunshine it's got to be at least six <laughs> Anyways, um, it's nice. I'm just sitting here and enjoying my beautiful view and the sounds of silence, the water lapping, uh, the wind blowing. It's just great. So happy I'm here. I'm going to get back to it. Bye. Um, some very small random bits of firewood, but there's really not much. Uh, I'm going to bring some stuff back for kindling so I can start the fire in the stove later. Um, but I, th I think that's about it. Um, I was walking along the path and then I got to this little creek here. Um, that goes from the bay into the other side of the lake, or into the other bay I guess. And uh, I guess that's the end of my journey. I could probably jump across, but it's pretty wide. Uh, in most places. I could probably get across there. It's maybe two and a half, three feet, but uh, I think I'm gonna go back and uh, enjoy my little seat in the sun. I'm gonna grab some firewood if I can find any while I'm here. And uh, that means I need my hands, so bye. Ah, uh, I'm pretty sure I just heard a loon, which I'm shocked because they usually go like mid end of October and it's like November 19th 
I know the babies stay around longer, but I'm going to film for a bit and uh, hopefully I hear it again and I catch it for you. I'm pretty sure it was a loon. I set up the tent, I put a tea light in the stove just to kind of get it warmed up a little bit. Um, and since then, uh, I've gone out walking, getting wood and stuff. I got a bunch of wood actually, and I got a bunch of sticks. So all the sticks that I got, I threw in the stove on top of the candle. And now I see that there's smoke coming out of the pipe. So hopefully it's getting nice and warm in the tent because I am starting to get very cold out here. And uh, I'm almost ready to go in there and get warm and cozy, maybe have a cocktail and uh, sit and listen to my audiobook. I was just taking a video of uh, my window and the view that you can see out of it. And uh, there's something in the water over there. I don't know if it's a loon or a duck or... I feel like it's not a loon because they're not supposed to be here anymore. Can you see it? Oh my gosh, you can see it. I don't know, it's not super clear, but my new phone is awesome. I'm gonna go outside and take a peek and see if it's anything. All right, I've come outside to check out uh, if there is a, actually a duck, maybe, or something in the water over there. Um, I still can't tell. <laughs> it's over there, kind of bobbing up and down in the water. And it's just, I don't know, a piece of wood floating or something. But it sure does look like something. Well, I just looked out the window again and the bobbler is gone. So it must have been something. Uh, maybe a duck or a loon. I don't think loons are still here, but I thought I heard one earlier, so I don't know. But it's definitely gone now. So it must have been. I'm pretty sure that it was a duck <laughs> because I just came down here to see what was happening and um, get some water and three ducks were right there basking in the glow of the sunshine and took off quacking to the right so there you have it mystery solved well it's about 4 30 4 45 and uh i finally come into the tent it's, it was pretty cold out there um i do have other layers i this is uh i got a new jacket uh it's green <laughs> um and it had this on the inside uh when i bought it i was in a bit of a rush and i was looking for a shell and i had the shell with this and i thought oh it's like a kind of like a warmer raincoat type you know for fall or you know shoulder season I thought oh this is perfect it's exactly what I need so I bought it when I got home I realized that I could take them apart and because because I wore the dry suit like you don't want to wear too many layers under that unless it's really really cold because it keeps you pretty warm I mean it keeps all your body heat in there too right um so I haven't put the shell on yet because I haven't needed it but uh I just kind of wanted to come in my hands have been getting cold I've been outside since 9.30, quarter after nine this morning. So um, I thought it'd be nice to come in and get warm. Uh, my thermometer down here on my bed says it's 8.7 degrees right now down there. So um, it's not super hot. I haven't put any wood on yet. I just put um, anything that I collected around here. That's what I've been throwing in the stove. I haven't put in any of the wood that I brought from home yet because I want to save that for later. Um, I put my tarps here around the um, edges because it was 
not quite touching the ground in some places and the wind's been blowing a lot. So I just put the orange one there. That's the one I use on most of my canoe trips, uh, the UST one. And then I have a footprint from uh, my Marmot tent that I just stuck there. So um, that's helped a lot. I can feel like the drafts like kind of slowing down. Uh, also at the end there where my backpack is, I put the uh, I put the tent in this giant Ziploc bag and I have two of them. So I just opened them up and laid them against the the edge there so that the draft doesn't come in. So that's pretty good. Um, last weekend I made a beef roast, a pot roast, and um, I had like five dinner leftovers. So I just brought one of those and um, it's in a Ziploc bag and it's like in a ball frozen solid. So um, I'm just gonna throw it on the stove and put it in the pot and just kind of let it slowly simmer I guess and unfreeze and then um, it's already cooked and everything and then what I brought was some uh, basmati rice that's already cooked um, so I'll just throw that in there it's just meat and gravy and uh, then I'll add the rice just before I eat or maybe about a half an hour before I eat so it can soak in a little bit like the gravy can soak in and uh, it should be tasty uh, in the meantime I'm just sitting here listening to an audiobook and uh, peeking out my window and seeing what's going on and um, that's about it so super comfy cozy in here I'm so happy to be in the hot tent I love being warm yep Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to get more information on the stuff I use on my trips, please check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks. Bye.